and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. Ex-IDF Deputy Chief said, Soldiers won't enter the tunnels, we'll turn them into Hamas traps without going in. Former Deputy IDF Chief of Staff Yair Golan says that, under no circumstances, should or will IDF soldiers enter Hamas's tunnels, as the army broadens its ground operation to destroy Hamas's military capabilities. In an interview with Army Radio, the reserves general says, you don't need to go into the tunnels, and, it would be a mistake to enter the tunnels, where Hamas is hiding out and waiting. The wisdom is to find the entrances and seal them, or send in smoke that will cause the enemy to come out, says Golan. Under no circumstances do you fight in the tunnels, where there is no chance that you won't get hurt. You don't fight inside the tunnels, you counter the threat of the tunnels, he says. When it is put to him that Hamas is capable of remaining inside its vast underground tunnel network, forever, Golan says, take my word for it. The IDF has the capabilities today to deal effectively with the tunnels. It has all the knowledge and the means. Golan, who headed south on October 7 and joined in the fighting against rampaging across the western Negev, elaborated, the moment that we get to the tunnels, or regarding the tunnels we've already reached, from the moment the entrances are found, the full advantage is with the attacking forces. Asked whether the IDF would have to enter Shifa hospital to expose and deal with the tunnel entrances there, Golan said he did not know how the fighting would play out. And he stressed the two imperatives of battling Hamas and freeing the hostages. Asked whether he would favor a deal whereby the hostages are freed in return for the Hamas leadership being given safe passage to Iran, Syria or elsewhere, Golan said, if only. If we can get to a situation where the Hamas leaders sail away and our hostages are freed, that would be almost too good to be true. He stressed that, nobody knows what is realistic, in terms of any such deal. But he adds, are we ready to pay a heavy price for the release of the hostages? The answer is yes. When he is asked about US President Joe Biden's support for a pause in Israel's offensive to enable the release of the hostages, Golan says, anything that enables the speedy release of the hostages would be blessed, but he doesn't think it will be that simple. He notes that Hamas is not the only force holding hostages. So, too, are other groups and clans, he says. What Israel can expect in a Gaza Metro tunnel fight. Israel-Hamas war set to enter a big phase, both in the streets and as deep as 70 meters underground. Amid fears of yet another long war in the region, Israel has now begun its ground campaign in Gaza. The Israel Defense Forces IDF, has already claimed several successes in its three-week campaign, including the elimination of several leaders including Ibrahim Biari, who it described as a ringleader of the October 7 attacks, and liberating at least one hostage held by Hamas. But Israel's military commanders will know that this is unlikely to be a simple operation, among the factors complicating their mission of eliminating Hamas is the Gaza Metro, a vast network of interconnected tunnels within the region. Having invested heavily in subterranean infrastructure over the years, Hamas is counting on this network to aid its survival in the coming weeks. Underground engineering has a long history in warfare. From antiquity to Vietnam, a range of groups have used tunnels to gain an advantage. Not only can they provide concealment and freedom of movement, but they also present a range of challenges for the attacking force, they can be hardened against any attacks from the surface. Storming underground networks can also be prohibitively difficult for an attacker, given the limited space available. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. For instance, the threat posed by Western air power caused Islamic State IS, to construct a large network of tunnels. These tunnels made surveillance and airstrikes difficult and were riddled with traps, making capture by ground forces dangerous and difficult. These benefits only really work if the tunnels are defended, of course, which wasn't always the case. For instance, in the 2015 battle for Sinjar, the majority of his fighters were long gone by the time Kurdish land forces arrived to liberate the city. Hamas's tunnel network presents a unique problem for the IDF. While the tunnels vary in quality, many are well-equipped and hardened, 
and deep enough to evade detection by ground-penetrating radar. Unsurprisingly, key Hamas allies, including Iran, are boasting about the Gaza Metro. The network provides the group with a haven and a means to move around the region unobserved. It places leadership and organizational infrastructure out of reach from air attacks. The system is laden with supplies as well as weapons and fuel. Defended, booby-trapped and likely to be populated with human shields and hostages as well as fighters, they will be challenging for even a well-equipped and capable attacking force. Yet, if not addressed, Hamas may continue to operate irrespective of what happens on the surface. Indeed, as many of the tunnels lead across the border, there is a risk of further incursions, rocket strikes and attacks on IDF forces. And, given the heavily urbanized nature of Gaza, much of the network is beneath civilian infrastructure, which further complicates Israeli operations. Hamas is a proficient and prolific user of tunnels. But in honing its expertise, the group has also provided Israeli forces with a decades-long crash course in how to deal with their underground operations. In addition to their own experience with Hamas tunnels, the IDF can also draw upon lessons from the and US experiences with drug cartels burrowing on their southern border with Mexico. While Hamas is counting on its tunnels to cause problems, Israel already has a range of solutions. It has already gained valuable experience in underground operations, having learned hard lessons from the past. A range of innovative purpose-built technologies and strategies can be used to provide the IDF with a technological edge. Some are simple, such as flooding tunnels with sewage, whereas others are more complex, involving specialized engineering. Some solutions, such as ground-penetrating explosives, might be difficult to use, given the presence of civilians. Israel has known about the tunnels for a long time and is taking them seriously. Recent operations suggest that the time spent training for this exact scenario is going to pay off, at least to a certain extent. But dealing with a network of more than 300 miles is still going to represent a massive challenge, and storming or blocking off every part of the system is probably impossible. Ultimately, Israel has no perfect solution to the complex problem posed by the Hamas underground network. But years of dealing with the Hamas metro means the IDF is not entirely unequipped to confront the challenge. It seems inevitable that the next days and weeks will be a bitter struggle, both in the streets of Gaza and as deep as 70 meters below ground. This is the end of our program today, see you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.